So, Pestily, my man, I thought we were friends. I really thought that. But I saw your tier list, and as a German, I do not understand any sense of humor. I put my uh, serious goggles on to underline my seriousness of this tier list. And today, my fellow comrades, I'm reacting to Pestili's Escape from Tarkov weapon tier list. And we have to talk, my friends, we have to talk. Dear comrades, Ivan the German is back for you guys and today I'm reacting to Pestili's gun tier list in Escape from Tarkov and there is some serious business right in this topic, especially for me, because let's start directly. I saw this one over here. We have the MP5, ladies and gents, we have the MP5. Where is it? Where is it? Look at that, guys. We have the MP5 on the same level as the Klin. Ladies and gents, and like the Remington and the Grach. So, Pestilli, I don't know what to say. I'm disappointed. No, I'm kidding. Because Pestilli said it's like a very personal list, and for me, I want to take it a little bit more objective. So, I want to start with the 9mm SMGs because I would say every SMG guy has his personal preference. So, but for me, the SMGs, or let's say this list, I want to underline some facts why, in my opinion, this list is wrong. But I really can understand that this is a very personal list, but I want to be a little bit more objective, as I said. Let's start with the PP-19. The PP-19 is a very great SMG, in my opinion, especially from level 0 to 10 or for a very long time. But as you can see right here, it is on a, a level. So it is on the same level like P90 or some other weapons um, for Pistilli. In my opinion, as I said, the PP-19 is great, but by fact, by a matter of fact, it is not better than the MP5 because you have like 650 rounds per minute and the base stats from the PP-19 aren't that great. So compared with like the MPX or, or even the MP5, the PP-19 isn't better. So in my opinion, grab the MP5, grab the MPX and you can handle a little bit better. Because of that, the... PP-19 would be for me a B or C grade, but it would be above the MPX and the MP5. By matter of fact, in my opinion, you have a very low fire rate compared to the MPX and the MP5. I made a full modded version of the PP-19 and you can get it down to 36 recoil. That's not that good compared to the MPX and the MP5. You can get the MP5 down to like uh, 29 and the MPX to 24. If you play the long barrel version and the short barrel version, I made a budget video about it, 29 recoil also. So in my opinion, the PP-19 is okay for beginner, but it's not an A tier um, if you compare it to the MPX or the MP5. Furthermore, let's talk about Vector, of course, S tier, MP7 also, 416 also, the SA. The SA is great. You have a very high, maybe the highest DPS in this game. But is it an S tier? It's very, very expensive. Um, to control it, it's a little bit hard. And uh, the ammunition is very expensive. Let's compare it with some other guns like the RSRSS or like even the M4. I would downgrade the SA a little bit to an A tier because for an S tier, it is like, I would say a little bit, a little bit harder to play, but that's a really personal, personal opinion about the SA. But the thing is with the RSRSS, I would upgrade it by far. You can get a 39, I guess what was it was a 39 recoil build out of it. I made a video about it. You can semi-auto so fast with this thing with the low recoil. It is not a B great gun. It is it must it is it is much better. Especially like let's talk about some other B grade weapons. MCX, the MPX, the MCX is okay. I would say the B grade is fine, but M4, come on, Pastilli. You're right with your difference about 50 rounds per minute. I would put it higher. Maybe it is even an S grade because you have a lower recoil compared to the HK, but then you can give it an A grade. But B grade, it's it's really low in my opinion. Especially if you can make some budget builds out of the M4, which I do not recommend for 100%, but you can play like a 100k build, around 100k, 150k out of the M4. And, but otherwise you put the MDR on an A grade because like you don't have to modify it a lot. That's true. But uh, in my opinion, the MDR is good, especially in the beginning. Put uh, some, some proper armor, level four, level five, some Alton or whatever, and you can rush through the early status of the wipe. I would switch them like the MDR on a the B and the M4 on an A grade. Furthermore, 
I would say Glock 17 and Glock 18. The Glock 17, I don't know. Um, IRL, I like Glock. I'm a Glock owner. For me, Glocks are great. You can modify them very well in, in Escape from Tarkov. I don't know, the Glock 18. Um, if you want to make some CQB high fire rate action go with the MP9, maybe you can play the Glock. But is it A grade? It's like on the same level like MDR, Well, RPK. I would downgrade them. Maybe like the Glock, both Glocks on C. I'm not sure about that. A grade is a little bit high in my opinion. In my opinion, the P90 is on a perfect spot. Just mount a side on it, go with some presser and we are ready to go. M700, my opinion, is not an A grade. Like the bolt action rifles in Tarkov, especially the 308, aren't that good in my opinion. They are maybe a C or a B grade. Even the Mosin could be a little bit higher than the M700. You can make some proper builds out of the M700, but it's not an A grade. It's not above the M4. Um, I'm not agreeing with that one over here. But I know Pastil likes the M700. I like the M700 also IRL, but not an Escape from Tarkov. The tier C Vector 45, I am not agreeing 100% because the Vector is too strong to being on a C. It's maybe a B because the big problem with the 45 Vector are the magazines, but otherwise this is a very powerful, very powerful um, SMG in my opinion. The SR25 is one of the biggest winners in this current patch because you can click as fast as with the Erzas, but you have a little bit higher um, recoil. But the thing is, mount a proper grip, proper uh, stock, and you're good to go. Um, what you need, same with the Erzas, is the 6 hour suppressor, but you are good to go with both weapons. So I would say Erzas on S or A, and the SR is on B or A. So I would change them. It's not on the same level like the AK or even a DVL. I like the DVL very much because you can suppress it quite well with the other um, barrel. And that's why I would say C grade is okay, but I, it's not the big difference between the M700 and the DVL. In my opinion. The thing is you can top load the M700, you can top load the Mosin and it, with the DVL you cannot. Um, that's of course a big difference but look at that Mossberg and Ketter on the same level with these weapons. I don't think so to be honest. Furthermore the M9. The M9 has some... yes I don't like the iron sights but it's not an F grade. F tier weapon. The M9, M9 in my opinion is better than the Grach. The Grach is for me personally horrible, but the M9 with a suppressor, maybe you can mount an RMR on it, is better than, P, than the P226. So it's maybe a D or an E, but it's not an F in my opinion. Also the UMP. The UMP isn't that good. It's not good. Way too much recoil, slow fire rate, but it's the same problem like with the PP19. Um, you have a little bit higher fire rate, you have better recoil of course, you can straight shoot him in the face. It's like maybe the UMP is an E or an D, because you can have some very cheap builds out of it and ammunition is not that bad. Furthermore, the AKM-366. With AP it is good, it is very good, it can be good. So it's maybe an E or an D because you can one shot a lot. Uh, it has high recoil, I know that, but it's not an F tier. It's not an F tier. It's 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 not that bad. It's even it's not worse than the AK or some pump action shotguns. Of course, in my opinion, that's that's the wrong positioning over here. Um, the SV89. It's also a thing. They fix the trigger delay. I know that, but you can't top load the SV. So I think it's maybe okayish. So furthermore, the MP9 is also okay. In my opinion, it's not good. It's not a good SMG because way too much recoil. It's way too expensive to modify to get some proper recoil. You can use it as a backup, uh, backup weapon for your sniper or whatever. Or maybe you're playing on 338. You can use it as a backup weapon. So the GL40. Pastilli said it's only for, for cheaters or for memers. In my opinion, the GL40 is way too underrated because it's so strong. It is way too strong and I do not know why almost nobody's playing it. I'm glad nobody's playing it, but the GL40, it's like we're playing on laps and one gun is like our fire support and he has the GL40. You can't beat this thing if you play this right. And you don't have to be that good to play the GL40 right. Your opponent can't hide anymore. It's better than any nade because you like you can you have a different angle and the range with the GL40 is great. So in my opinion, the GL40 is way too underrated 
for what you can do with that thing. Like we played a lot of laps recently and you can um, beat some cheaters, you can beat some, some campers, you can shoot across everything and it's like your opponent can't react. If you're shooting your opponent, you have to headshot him to, to one-shot him, of course. But with the GL40, you don't have to headshot him to one-shot your opponent quite easily. In my opinion, GL40 is way too underrated. I thought as soon as I heard they bring the GL40 into the game, Tarkov is dead. Because they are destroying Tarkov the G because of the GL40. This, this thing is... In my opinion, way too powerful, and I'm glad nobody is using it. So, as I said, GL40 is is crazy. GL40 is crazy, and I like the fire support port thing we are doing currently. That one guy is our fire support. He has like some backup weapons, but he is mainly using the GL40. It's like someone is jiggle peeking, or is like showing for a couple of seconds. GL40 is dead. He can't do anything. The MK18. Same thing, it's like you can one-shot everything. I like the idea that you have to find the ammunition or the best ammunition. And so I think it's okay. It's it's on the right spot. But the GL40 is crazy. It's crazy, it really is. So for me personally, the MP7 did not work very well. But I don't want to, to judge this over here because it's a personal thing. And the Zyga. The Zyga is a good one over here. AT8 tier is a little bit too high in my opinion. You can have some brutal setups with it, but I'm struggling with like A tier or B tier, but it's not under the M4. So, of course, and I, I don't think so. The MDR, 308 MDR is great because you only have to mount a suppressor or some other muzzle devices, grip, side, and you're good to go. The RPK, because same thing, grip, um, side, and muzzle flash, and you're good to go. You can have some very budget builds out of it, in my opinion, it's the best or one of the best 545 AKs, but AK-103. Yeah, good that I, I spotted the MK-103. The MK-103 is an A-tier in my opinion. It is it is an A-tier because you can play it with the 50 rounders and you can shoot fully automatic very well. In my opinion, the Tarkov meta is dominating by fully automatic guns, so that's why the AK-103 is, is on an A-tier, minimum A-tier. It is, it is a great gun. The RFB. The RFB is a cheap way to play 308. I don't like the Vapor because for me personally the Vapor is not working. I don't know why. But the RFB is like a cheaper mix compared to the 308 and like the SR. Because you can mount a proper scope, grip and you are basically good to go. And I would play it like or I would rank it on a D or C tier. Maybe it's like very, very in between because it performs worse compared to a vector or it's less effectiveness maybe but on woods or reserve you're basically good to go you can shoot 308 m80s very easily or m61 so e grade or e tier is is a little bit too low in my opinion adars and tx yeah i would maybe put it a little bit higher but i'm not a big fan of semi-automatic m556 um, so i would say it's maybe okay to put them right there and I guess that's basically it. That's basically it. Um, as you can see, I would change a lot based on some facts, of course, some personal preferences. And I'm very interested in your comment. Let me know what you think about his tier list. I am glad he made this effort to put this list online, of course. And I'm very interested about your opinion. Leave a comment in the comment section below and see you in the next video, guys.